I have always been fascinated by North Korea and how much they hate us. How they teach their children songs about destroying America. How one man can have so much control through fear and oppression. I highly recommend you watch a few documentaries on Netflix about it. It's really interesting stuff. You will be just as shocked as I am about what's really going on over there. Now the home front story starts with Kim Jong-il dying and giving total dictatorial control to his son. Which is a little bit of a bummer. I was hoping there'd be a mission in there somewhere where you get to kick Jong-il's ass. What follows next though is absolutely absurd. North Korea unites the Koreas without US, China or Russia even noticing. Then the world falls into a chaos from an Iran versus Saudi Arabian war. Which leads to the events of a nuclear powered North Korea invading the United States. First off the Koreans don't invade the US. They, they could never invade the US. Sometimes I do. No, Cho! You've never invaded the U.S. Sometimes I do. God damn it! Shut up, Cho! <laughs> anyway, these guys could never supply their army for any extended occupation. It's just too far-fetched to invoke the serious emotion that this game wants you to experience. Now, I appreciate the fact that it's not just another Russian invasion, but would it kill them to set the game in more realistic flashpoints around the globe and involve far more countries like it really would? You can have missions in South Korea. You know, where our US forces are stationed? And there's no way North Korea would steamroll South Korea without a fight. You know, a multiplayer battle map on that very famous line in between North and South Korea, any kind of battle there would be awesome. in just a bit more reality, it would have been a lot more effective. Instead, we get a story filled with cliches like the Texan with a big belt buckle that's loud and obnoxious and loses his shit. Oh wait, that is kind of what we do. But the rest of the characters are paper thin and you will not care by the end of the game. And while the game could be surprisingly brutal, showing small children in a war environment, Mass graves. What the we, fuck? We should turn back. Jesus. Thrown into a pit like garbage. How many people are in this ditch? You sons of bitches. Scumbag motherfuckers. You motherfuckers! You think you can just throw us in a goddamn ditch? Sentry! You Stay behind the bleachers! Our country! Take out those sentries! I'll burn you, you sons of bitches! We gotta make our way around the field! Get close enough to those towers to toss a grenade! Come get some! I'm gonna make you fuckers pay for this! And the effects of white phosphorus on unprotected soldiers. It feels like it's all for nothing. I thought I smelled Korean barbecue. Jesus, Connor. You won't know anyone from anyone else by the end, nor will you care. The game is all of four hours. Four hours again. Again. What the f did they need the writer from Red Dawn for if it's just gonna be a big, long, boring shooting gallery? There is none of that Red Dawn coolness in this game, if that's what you're expecting. 
because we live here! Chaos's last title was one that showed promise but wasn't quite there, Frontline Fuels of War. Unfortunately, Homefront suffers from a lot of the same symptoms. It's rough on the eyes, the character models look outdated, the graphics are dirty and jaggy, and the levels are far too linear. Thankfully, your AI teammates aren't the worst I've ever seen. In fact, they're alright. Which is good because most of all of this game, you're going to have AI teammates following you around. But why they constantly seem to get in your way in doorways baffles me. Why force your main character behind an invisible wall until your slow ass AI teammates decide they want to show up just to open a f door? It completely pulls you out of the experience. On the opposite side, there is definitely challenge from the AI. But that's mostly due to how unrealistically accurate the AI is on even medium settings. Shooting at you from impossible angles and tiny holes. Instead of the smart flanking and outmaneuvering tactics you'll see in some other games. Homefront does try to throw in some variation by giving you control of a Goliath tank through several levels and even a Hilo at one point. Hopper, I've got half the charges in place. These are fun, but when the core game is so below average, it's not much of a concession. The icing on the single player cake is that this isn't a self-contained story. Sequel bait ending? Check. One of those abrupt endings where you're finally able to do something cool and it ends not knowing whether a character is dead or not? Check. I could tell that THQ wanted a franchise out of Homefront. They want their own Call of Duty, but they're not gonna get it with this one unless some serious changes are made no matter how much money they dump into marketing. Now, multiplayer is the only thing worth anything in this game. Multiplayer is good. It's better than good. It's actually excellent. But you know, I gotta say that it's ironic for a game that talks about oppression for there to be an online passcode to play. If you want to play anything above the fifth level, you have to put in a battle code effectively treating everyone like criminals, guilty before being proven innocent. I will never like this practice, ever. It's not necessary in the least. No matter what, at some point somebody purchased the retail copy of the game. That's one spot on your servers, whether it's the original owner or whether it's the rebuyer of the same game, it's still one spot on your servers that has already been paid for. God. Anyway, the game features huge 32 player battles on the consoles with an excellent party lobby system. You got multiple classes with unique abilities, weapons, upgrades, gadgets, and all of these unlock as you progress through your levels. Now there's only a handful of modes to play over just seven maps, but each map feels well designed. Multiple hostiles, closing on Alpha. tell that this is where Chaos put all of their effort. The best online mode has a similar playstyle to Bad Company 2, which is a good thing as players push the battle lines back and forth and fight over three specific objectives. Players can then spend battle points that they acquire through kills to spend on things like air strikes, UAV sweeps, rocket launchers, vehicle spawns, and fun little drones.
This is easily one of the game's best online features, and it's much better than any kill streak ratio system. If you get Homefront, get it to play its multiplayer. There was a huge marketing blitz for Homefront at E3. It had the largest posters and billboards of all the games there. I'd never seen anything like it. Complete cosplayers and heavy armor. What must have been hundreds of regular North Korean soldiers lining up for some kind of uh, show at E3, the floors of E3. Huge pre-order bonuses for the game full Bluetooth headsets, headphones, and even North Korean propaganda taco trucks. And after all of that, this is what they had to offer? I can't help but be disappointed. If you didn't pick it up on release day, don't worry about it. The final verdict for Homefront is 6 out of 10. It's better than, say, Medal of Honor, but unless you're into the larger 32-player console battles online, there's a lot of other things out there. So I can't recommend this at full price, no. But I do think, because the multiplayer is so strong, that you should look into it when the price drops. So until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. If you look